This episode is brought to you by Brilliant. The past two centuries have been a period of historically unprecedented technological progression, a time where advancements have unfolded at a remarkable pace. Central to this era of innovation has been the development of electrical and communication infrastructure, this intricate network mirroring the complexity of a biological system not only powers, but also seamlessly connects the diverse facets of our technological world. When considering the vast collection of housing, commercial, military, and institutional buildings, the infrastructure that connects them, the nearly 2 billion vehicles traversing our planet, and the myriad of other products and lesser-known structures, an astonishing estimation emerges. Earth is interwoven with approximately 4.7 trillion kilometers or about 3 trillion miles of wiring. This staggering length approaches half a light year, a distance, if stretched end to end, would extend far beyond the boundaries of our solar system and into where interstellar space begins. But beyond the broad spectrum of technologies that make up this wiring is the crucial, though often overlooked, aspect of cable management and its symbolic product, the cable tie. The concept for the modern cable tie was first developed by an obscure Scottish immigrant backed by a growing electrical product supplier. The story begins in 1898 when electric lighting was first introduced to New York City. Two Princeton University students, Robert M. Thomas and Hobart D. Betts, joined together to sell conduit to electrical distributors. As the use of electricity increased, Thomas and Betts' venture would prove to be highly profitable, and in 1911, they began to develop, manufacture, and market products under their own brand. By 1917, all facets of their business would be consolidated in Elizabeth, New Jersey. By the 1950s, Scottish immigrant Maurice C. Logan would join Thomas and Betts. Born on July 6, 1921 in Dalmere, Scotland, Little is known about Logan's early life, but by 1956, it is well documented that he had been living in Elizabeth, New Jersey and working for Thomas and Betts. That year, Logan was assigned to visit a Boeing aircraft manufacturing facility to assess electrical supply requirements for the plant, where he observed firsthand the process of aircraft wiring. At the time, aircraft wiring was managed using cable lacing a technique pioneered at the dawn of telecommunications over a century prior. Cable lacing involves the use of a slender cord, traditionally crafted from waxed linen, to neatly secure a bundle of cables. This is achieved through a series of meticulously laid out running lock stitches. In contemporary adaptations of the technique, lacing tapes have evolved incorporating modern materials like nylon, polyester, teflon, fiberglass, and Nomex. These materials are often enhanced with various coatings to bolster knot security, ensuring the lacing remains both functional and reliable. Cable lacing was originally developed for telegraph lines and eventually was applied to phone lines and other telecommunications infrastructure. The technique begins and ends with a knot, typically a whipping knot, to securely fasten the free ends. The wrapping spacing is carefully adjusted according to the harness diameter ensuring the wires are tightly and neatly bundled, with any access ends trimmed for neatness. Beyond the basic continuous or running lacing, various patterns are employed depending on the specific needs, including isolated knots called spot ties. In telecommunications, two specialized lacing styles are prevalent, the Chicago Stitch and Kansas City Stitch. Cable lacing's ability to organize cables without creating obstructions along their length made it ideal initially for naval use. Its low bulk and low weight would also make the technique ideal for aerospace use, particularly in one-off designs such as spacecraft. NASA, for example, has adopted its own strict in-house standards for cable lacing. While observing the laborious process of creating cable-laced harnesses on large aircraft assemblies, Logan identified significant challenges. Workers manually laced thousands of feet of wire across 50-foot-long plywood sheets using wax-coated braided nylon cord. This arduous task often left them with hamburger hands, a term coined for the calluses and deep cuts created by the tedious labor. Determined to simplify the process, 
Logan dedicated two years to exploring various tools and materials. His efforts culminated on June 24, 1958 with a patent submission for his novel Cable Tie. Logan's initial concept, which would lead to the issuing of two subsequent patents in 1962, was based on a strap made of nylon. While nylon was a common material at the time, mass-producing inexpensive, shaped components only recently became possible with the emergence of screw injection molding. Developed in 1946, American inventor James Watson Hendry developed the first screw injection machine. Spurred by the demands of World War II, this innovation enabled more precise control of injection speed and significantly improved the quality of the produced items. The screw injection molding technique allowed for premixing of material, allowing for tighter control over the final product's characteristics. Logan's cable tie design was presented in several variants. Fundamentally, it consists of a nylon strap with an integrated oval aperture. The strap would lace into itself, looping around the cabling and securing purely by friction into the aperture. The design was also presented with both a slide-on and integrated mounting head. Three additional variants were shown that demonstrated the use of a small sheet metal clasp with wings that would bite into the strap, securing it. Despite Logan's determination to demonstrate the use of cable ties, his patent illustrated a clear indecisiveness for how to actually latch them. Aside from the metal tooth option and the aperture shape, his patent also demonstrated ways to lock them with loops, twists, and even notches. Logan would even go so far as to patent a matching tool to draw and twist the strap through the aperture. Strangely, Logan's own patent made reference to an existing patent issued to Kurt Robel, which demonstrated various cable binding devices that employed an integrated tooth ratcheting mechanism for locking them. Ultimately, Thomas and Betts developed the stamped metal clasp variant that incorporated a mounting hole into its first cable tie product called Tie Wrap. Within a few years, Thomas and Betts would further refine the design to incorporate lateral locking grooves a more pronounced inverted oval aperture, and an embedded steel locking barb for a far more secure locking mechanism. The end of the tail was also molded with stippling for better pulling grip by hand or tooling, and it also further enhanced locking with larger cable bundles. A patent for the enhanced design would be issued in 1962 to Thomas and Betts engineers, with the design quickly becoming their signature cable tie tie wrap product. The Robel name resurfaced in the history of cable ties when it was discovered that the new tie wrap design closely resembled a British patent issued to him in 1959. Although legal action was initiated against Thomas and Betts, the specifics have faded into history. Ultimately, Thomas and Betts prevailed in the market with their product and maintained the claim as the inventors of the cable tie. Tie wrap cable ties have expanded into a broad range of specialized versions. These include heat resistant variants, as well as varieties designed to resist UV rays, extreme temperatures, and harsh chemicals. One particular polyamide based model is engineered for the demanding conditions of space, capable of enduring intense radiation and vacuum. Another variant has an embedded material that is detectable for safety in food processing environments. Tie wrap cable ties would also be produced in a large range of lengths, from 4 inches all the way up to 42 inches. Thomas and Betts would go on to create two highly popular offshoot products. TieMet, an extremely durable tie made of 316 stainless steel that came in either a self-locking steel ball, a pawl and ratchet, or a reusable buckle design. And TieFast Cable Ties, a completely nylon tie that relies on a toothed strap and an integrated ratchet barb within the aperture. Ironically, operating on a similar principle to Robel's earlier patent, TieFast products would become the most popular and recognized form of cable ties. Its design would be copied worldwide, with the general design being commonly referred to as zip ties, hose ties, or tie wraps. Today, more than 45 companies manufacture cable ties worldwide, with total production estimated at 100 billion units annually. 
Thomas and Betts, now a member of the ABB group of companies and branded as ABB Installation Products, sells hundreds of millions of dollars worth of cable ties every year and continue to develop the product for niche applications. Morris Logan had dedicated his entire career to Thomas and Betts, significantly contributing to the development and marketing of various products. He filed at least six patent applications and ascended to the role of Vice President of Research and Development before retiring. In 2006, Logan relocated to Seabrook Village in Tinton Falls, New Jersey, where he passed away in November 2007 at the age of 86. Cable ties have become a ubiquitous presence wherever humanity has ventured. They can be found on the ocean floor, the surface of Mars, and even abroad the fastest man-made objects on Earth. They play a critical role in the data centers that power our information-driven world and are a common component in the vehicles we use. Their widespread utility, yet unassuming simplicity, make them indispensable to our modern world. The story of cable ties is a classic one of 20th century innovation. Observe a problem, derive an idea from existing possibilities, and evolve a solution from these ideas into a standard product of industry. This pattern is repeating itself once again in the current innovation revolution based around AI. Have you ever wanted to build a solid understanding of the foundations of AI? Well, there's a free and easy way to get started immediately. That's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is my go-to tool for diving headfirst into learning a new concept. It's a website and app built off the principle of active problem solving. Because to truly learn something, it takes more than just watching it. You have to experience it. Brilliance is constantly developing their courses to offer the most visual, hands-on approach possible to make mastering the key concepts behind today's technology effective and engaging. A great starting point I highly recommend is Brilliant's How Large Language Models Work course. In this series of lessons, you'll explore how AI is applied to text-based tasks like natural language understanding text generation, language translation, and textual analysis using an incredibly intuitive set of exercises that will open your eyes to this attention-grabbing emerging technology. With Brilliant, you learn in depth and at your own pace. It's not about memorizing or regurgitating facts. You simply pick a course you're interested in and get started. If you feel stuck or made a mistake, an explanation is always available to help you through the learning process. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days and start learning STEM today, visit brilliant.org forward slash newmind or click on the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.